So now things get a little, cre little creepier. Now we're going into one of the apartment buildings. Oh, look to the right. That glass effect blew my yes. mind in 2004. That that rippled glass effect. I was just amazed at that. I was like, how, how are they doing that? Because I'd never really seen pixel shaders used yeah, to their this fullest game... yet. This game, I think, really pioneered the use of, of effective pixel shaders, didn't it? I can't think of another yeah. game that was contemporary to this or before this that really had shaders to the degree that this game does. Doom 3 did a bit of it. There were some windows yeah. that when you looked through them, they were a little warped. But it didn't really use it like that. Like, that is just amazing. And still today, it really grabs my eye. Like, oh, that's neat. Yeah, it, it still looks great, even in 2011. So, so now we're in the complex that is being like systematically raided. Yeah, they're just going through one apartment at a time right now, so things are a little more dangerous, but they're not actually... They're just sort of knocking on doors right now. Did you just break that oh, cup open on that guy's no. face? Yeah, that, this <laughs> bottle I dick. can't break. Hey, who's drinking that? Just tap it. Gorgia held Freebird. Oh, I thought you were a cop. <laughs> Take the TV. Throw that TV off the television and they get pissed. Yeah. Well, now we're in trouble. Oh, they didn't say anything about it. Try throwing it through the. You can kind of see like the, the armored cars. On the street and everything. That 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 oh, and you that hear the alarm. in the background. That is your warning that it is you had best start hustling that ass. It is hustle in, in time. The sense that you're yeah. trying to move fast. I mean, yeah. Not like it's time to. Okay, you get it. Moving on. <laughs> it's time to get down. Not that either. Just start running. This gonna be okay. Um. Yeah, I I love this. I love these this. characters. You get to see how these show people up. live. Yeah, all throughout, throughout every episode, it's these guys just oh. sitting there doing the same thing. Are they in episode one? I don't remember them in episode one. I think, one. yeah, they're in, like, the... the... the one hideout place, safe house, that has the zombies on the second floor. I think they're in that place. Oh. I'm pretty sure. What are you doing? Do you need to go? He's gonna take a <laughs> bath. It's been 12 years or something. Uh oh. <laughs> I think we did something wrong. Oh, here it goes. Oh yeah, I love the announcer. Uh, the announcer voice here. We can't hear really hear her right now. Yeah. She says there's been a miscount in your block. Like, they know there's one more person than should be here. Dude, you can die in this oh. part of the game. Oh, yeah, that's right. Around enough. <laughs> Screwing around enough. That is Josh's forte. Fortunately, this game has probably the most generous autosave system Look ever. Look at that. Well, this is the that's first cool. place you really face danger, so they do save right before that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, this game, uh, I, I would just want to talk about this real quick. This game lets you quick save. I hate games that don't let you goddamn quick save. I mean, I goddamn hate it. Yeah. It's like, the game, what right does the game have to decide what parts I do and do not want to play over and over again? Or checkpoint save systems like Alpha Protocol, where the checkpoint save would be immediately after the important dialogue that you yeah. want to have a second chance at doing because it's yeah. timed. And it's not it's not harder, because it, it's the same stuff over and over again. It just takes off. And yes. now you can see really the whole dilapidated city here. This is magnificent even to even six yeah. years, seven years later, this is still magnificent. And, you know, okay, it's worth mentioning that the reason they can make it this oh, complicated in detail me. is that the game is pretty much on rails. But Half-Life yeah. 2 is very good at making those rails invisible and making yeah. you feel like oh, right. this is just what I would be doing. Yeah, right there's, down there. There's no... I wanted, it took, I wanted to say this before we leave this room. Right down there, it took me forever to figure this out, but that's your fight with with Dog at your side, where he throws yes. the APC. It was like my fourth time through the game before I realized that. 
I just wanted to point that out, that I was slow. Oh, you're spoiling the game, oh, Seamus. You're gonna ruin it for everyone who hasn't played it yet. Um, yeah. but, but the invisible walls in this game tend to make sense. Like, usually it's not just like, oh, you can't go through. Well, there are a lot of doors that you can't go through. But it's like, oh, there's a Metro cop coming through that door. I guess I shouldn't go that way. Yeah, they do a good job of no, hiding don't. the rails or making them feel like you feel like you passed up ten different ways to do things and you just pick this one. You feel like you made a choice and then you go through the game the second time and you Dr. realize, wait Freeman, a minute, I presume. there's no choice to be made there. I followed yeah. this pre- I but I followed rails without the even knowing be it. Awake, because a really railroading isn't just forcing the player to make a choice. It's forcing them to make a choice that doesn't Dr. make Kleiner sense to them. This way. And the choices you're forced to make <laughs> here occurred to him Always that you might not sense. have a map. Yeah, so here is Alex Vance, aka the best companion NPC I'm in Alex Vance. history. My father worked with you back in Black Mesa. I'll buy that. Yeah, that's fair. I'm sure you don't you remember know, that, me, that's though. pretty fair. Yeah, Valve I can't had picture any words, aren't you? Valve had the she doesn't task. Yeah, yeah. she doesn't steal yeah, making a character kills? that doesn't annoy you. Remember him from Black Mesa? Yeah. Your she doesn't steal your kills. She doesn't piss you off or say <laughs> okay, stupid my stuff. On Dr. Breen. She's not always hurrying you along. She never feels like a nuisance. She never gets lost or stuck. Or, you know, rarely. I'm sure somebody out there has a story that they'll be happy to share in the comments. But... <laughs> yeah, the I love this. problem she walks that backwards. game developers... Yeah, that game developers have with giving the player companion NPCs that aren't under their own control is that inevitably Funny, the player will want to murder the fuck out of the companion NPCs because they act like idiots. That never really happened to me with with Alex. Oh yeah, and if you really want to And a lot of work went player, into Oh watch her jump the city on foot. Yeah. yeah. That's a dangerous route to my Love father. that if little touches really like that. With a companion, if you really Today, want to make them hate that companion, the make the companion the love interest. Because then not yeah. only is it, here's this, Here. like, this hanger-on that follows you around like a goddamn hemorrhoid, but then you make it, here's this really annoying character that you're oh, supposed to really like, and that nice your character you. always expresses adoration for. Yeah. That of course, of your character expresses you know. nothing in this game. Well, that's that. That's you never speak, you never... This is something really cool. I always teleporter. Break. Oh, hello, Alex. Well, uh, almost all right. Oh yeah, Pe Lamar people. I often see like forum posts again. to the effect of, you know, people talk about Gordon Freeman like he's a great character, you know, but he never says anything. I don't buy that. That's not a good character. Well, the thing is, having him not say anything doesn't make him a good character. Like if he was in, it was in a movie, though, it just make him a sociopath. We owe a great deal but when you're playing him, he's a good character because you can wake. imagine why he's doing everything for yourself. Yeah, and that sounds yeah. like a lazy cop out, but since you are the person doing everything, you know why you're doing all of it. You know what your motivations are for, you know, for going that way or for shooting those dudes more quickly or for following orders or for anything. You know why. You're doing how, it? Yeah, imagine how retarded go. this game would Man, sound Gordon, if, you if Gordon Freeman was like, All right, I'm gonna take care of these combine scum, you, you guys sit tight. <laughs> it would just be <laughs> retarded, and we can, we can imagine right, him, this we can really pour letter. ourselves into it. We'll I imagine him to be very quiet, taciturn, analytical. For real this time? Um, yeah. Still have nightmares about and maybe that. other no, people no, no. imagine There's him to be full of bravado, yeah. I don't We've know. But he, he is, is Majors. much, it, it lets you shape him, Doc, at least in your mind a bit. Streets, you might like, I, I don't want to him hear him what? say stuff. Oh dear, you're right. I sort of saw him as the IT guy. You know, like the guy who comes in to fix people's computers and, you know, unscrew the network after somebody makes some giant mistake or after some executive uses their CD trays and bagel toaster. And, you know, he fixes people's problems and then he gets out and then he does his thing, you know? He solves practical problems. Lamar, there you are. I you <laughs> oh, we missed. We missed the. Not. This is a. This Never is a major thing because, of course, those head crabs scared yeah. the piss out of you in the first game. They were so nasty. And then Kleiner here has it as a pet. Yeah, he's pet. got one and he's taken its <laughs> beak out or whatever it uses to. And and he tries to get it to, to sit on his head. Yeah, it evidently oh, rides around on It'll his head because it can't 
It can no longer penetrate his yeah. skull and Long suck out his brains lucky. and use his body yeah. as a puppet like it was created to. And uh, the headcrabs are significantly larger in this game than they were in Half-Life 1. Half-Life 1, they were about the size of a football yeah. in this game. They're about the size of a turkey. Yeah. Also, uh, funny thing to note is that if you cheat, get weapons, and kill Lamar, like, in this sequence, you will break the game and not be able to progress. Like, that is a scripted event that has to happen. So what you're saying is that when you break the game, you break the game. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, but you break it more so than... <laughs> this is... This is yeah. a big moment. I like the HEV suit as a game mechanic. It explains why you are such a bullet sponge. I love that. As opposed to you just being a phenomenal badass. It's like, okay, yeah. this HEV suit, it's highly experimental. We can't make them now that it's the post-apocalypse. We, we just can't turn these things out. They require energy. They stick out like a sore thumb. You can't walk around in public wearing them. Um, that's why we don't see a whole bunch of them. Yeah, and I also like they never really explain the, capa the capabilities fully, so like you can kind of read more into it than like they can necessarily spell out without it seeming ridiculous. In the in the uh, first game when you got hurt, the suit the suit has kind of this voice, and it would say things like "minor fracture detected." Oh, it, it does and I'd that. Be like, oh. <laughs> Oh really? I don't remember. It must only say that when you fall. Emergency. Yeah, it would say Emergency that again. Death imminent. I remember that from when I got Why hit by poison head crabs later the on. Over there. Oh. Wait for my word. Isaac, are you there? Yes, yes, Eli. Bit of a hold up on this end. You'll never guess. Who okay, I love this. Introducing characters carefully, uh, one at a time. We learn is. everyone's yeah. name. This Indeed is something is. other and games screw up. They're like, and this is so and so. Nobody ever freedom. introduces us to Are these people because we should know them all. all but they call each other end. like when and he gets on, uh, um, Doctor Vance there on the TV. He says, "Isaac, are you there?" Other people call him Doctor Kleiner. Oh, okay, that's Isaac Kleiner. We can figure this out again. The game just trusts That's you to be said last smart time. Hey, and uh, figure yeah, things out. Bad. And then when you figure things out, you feel smart and you don't feel like you're being handheld through the whole thing. So, yeah, and really, it's not even trusting you to be smart. It's trusting uh, you with, like, third-grade reading comprehension Jimmy, abilities. You're right. Yeah. Gordon, and other games you don't. That, you know what? In. That's the problem, is the other games right there, trust, treat you like you were the biggest idiot who ever lived. And you Next. couldn't possibly figure Can something I out if it doesn't way? spell it out for you. Gordon, go right ahead. Very good. Final sequence. So that's a big moment. Uh, Not MIT education look. flipping the switch. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. I love this moment. You're like, you see her get teleported. Then you're like, oh, and I'll just teleport through, and then we'll be to this other place, well, and it'll be that did easy. It work? See for yourself. <laughs> I <laughs> love this you setup. Like Maybe you I like that. No, no, I love that that setup where fantastic work, is it? Well, it shows you that's the goal. Dr. It's not Freeman, like, oh, I'm gonna just gonna test the teleporter. You the get in, and you know it's gonna go horribly through. wrong. Right you are. But at least you can see a goal. Good and then when you actually have to do this the hard way, it makes MIT it that much more meaningful. Really pays for itself. All right, Barney, your turn. Gee, thanks. Gordon, Screw as soon you, as you're Barney. in position, we'll send you to <laughs> And not a moment too soon. Well, one thing I wanted to mention uh, earlier when we were talking about Barney is that this Barney is, uh, like, this Barney himself is apparently supposed to be the Barney from, uh, from Blue Shift. Initializing. In three, yeah, which gets out with a bunch of scientists. One. Yeah, which is like sort of non-canonical, but I mean, Gordon. I don't yes, think indeed. Valve's ever made We're a specific statement you. about it. Bon voyage, but they've best of luck they've been uh, they haven't hesitated to to change things that appeared in Blue it? Shift it's and uh, an opposing oh, force if they wanted to. Oh, ah, the teleporter's malfunctioning. This is a pretty nice moment. This, this is, is an awesome this echoes show. back. This echoes back to the first game. Oh yeah, that, that's the important thing. For, if you haven't played this, 
shame. But if you haven't played this in the first game, you're testing out this teleporting technology, and you're sort of the guy that brings the apocalypse. You turn on this teleporter, and you, you go through this where you shift between several environments. Yeah. And then when you snap out of it, um, aliens are invading, and there's craziness everywhere. Um, and you have to fight your way out of this scientific complex called Black Mesa. And it does the same thing in this game, calling back to it, but it's not the exact same sequence. They hit the notes without just replaying the same song. Shut it down, shut it down! Or they, they, they hit all the right notes without just recycling the same ideas again and again. Yeah. yeah. A solid callback to the original. And you don't need to know that to appreciate this sequence. So already, it's like, you appeared in the administrator's office, basically, one of the chief bad guys around here looked right at you and knows you're here. <laughs> and now you appear basically right back where you started, except you're outside and camera robots are taking your picture no matter where you go and you can't get rid of them because you don't have any weapons. So they're following you and you know you're they're announcing your position to everyone. Oh, it is such a frustrating moment. So brilliantly done. And you're wearing a bright orange suit, too. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Yes! A bright orange shoot-me suit. Really? Did we plow through that loading screen already? Hey, Man, I blinked yeah. and I missed it. The Citadel's on nice. Alert. We had 15 miles to Black like Mesa. Get out of city <laughs> Got a fully charged hazard can, suit. Gordon. Take the old Crowbar. Canal, right? It's dark They'll and you're wearing your glasses. It's, it's a dangerous route, but there's a whole <laughs> network <laughs> nice. of refugees and they'll help you if they can. I come with Now, you, the but Citadel I look there, that's Dr. that's Kleiner. important. Can we look at that oh, for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, as soon as we get to uh, the crowbar. Back in Black Mesa. Good luck Man, out you there. are just right. in such a hurry to get your weapon, aren't you? Ha 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 ha! Let's go back here and break some boxes. Alright, alright. Yeah, because so, goodness yeah. knows we're not going to see a lot of that in the moments ahead. <laughs> Yes, yeah, th there's day. the there's the there's the bad guy's base, which is obviously an impossibly tall building, like taller than anything yeah. humans have ever built by like a factor of ten. It's ridiculously and huge, and you can't see it on the stream, but there are specs flying out of that building. I you know I'm sure you can see it on or... the recording. When, okay, when they actually see, so. see the video. Yeah, to me it's clear skies, but. Yeah, you could yeah. just see these clouds of camera bots flying out, and you know they're just going to be scouring the city for you. And it's just this intense moment. Well, like, you realize look at the everyone is suddenly scene. after you. This is this is what we're talking about when we talk about Valve and environmental storytelling. You walk out here, there's one way to go, you turn, and you can't miss the Citadel there. And when you walk out the first, like, if you saw initially, um, the Citadel's moving. Like, there are moving parts in the Citadel. So it's this impossible construction that's obviously alien. A clear marker that, that there is something oppressing the human race and is right there. Oh, and what's There's right next There's no way you can't see A couple see of it. human smokestacks, which, you know, would have been really big beforehand, but are so obviously small and scrawny now. It yep. just makes you feel very small and very vulnerable. 